Hello everyone, we're trying to assemble the 3D printed sample rotator here that was developed at Michigan Techno Technological University um, under Dr. Joshua Pierce and uh, so this is how the assembled version looks like and operates. This is a lab sample rotator that can take in test tubes and has varying sizes of test tubes that can be taken up in here. And this is another version of the similar uh, product that can double up as a laboratory shaker as well. So now we'll try to assemble the uh, test tube holder or the rotisserie sub-assembly on the shaft that we printed out. So this is the shaft with O-rings attached on them as you would have seen. And point to note here, the rotisseries have these slots in here that can accept the O-rings. And so what we do is we are trying to sandwich the rubber pad between two set of rotisseries and put them across in the shaft on two ends to make it the rotating the, the sample rotator point. So the first step is to properly attach or slot in the the o-rings at appropriate slots like you would see here. and complete the whole circle around it by putting another rotisserie over it. So once you're all set you will be able to hold it well and be able to rotate it like it's supposed to. And depending on the amount of grip one wants, the number of test tubes or the heaviness of the test tubes that you're putting in and uh, the kind of print quality that you've got, you could decide to use all the four holes or all the six holes in fact or use just a couple of them as I usually do and a couple of the other ones at the end to complete the whole sub-assembly. The similar step on the other side would complete the sub-assembly. So as you can see now all the nuts and bolts have been placed at appropriate places and uh, the sub-assembly is ready. Uh, point to note that this part here it takes in the motor shaft and to put a good hold on the motor shaft and put a, to maintain a good grip they've added uh, an embedded nut here and an M2 embedded nut and an M2 screw or a set screw that can be put here so uh, just for illustration purposes I've passed a M2 uh, bolt here so that it can be seen that uh, basically it could grip a shaft that is smaller diameter as well using this technique. And also it rotates freely as required, uh, not really freely but then constrained rotation so that it stays where it is said to be stayed when the sample rotator is operated. So that's your sub-assembly already and all set. So this is the smaller pillar. This uh, has been prepared for the next stage but then this involved only two steps. One was to put in the nuts uh, of the defined size and uh, to make sure that they are aligned and they are all ready to function and also to press fit the the bearing, the roller skate bearing so that's that's the smaller pillar ready to go also the bigger pillar was made to be ready uh, by doing the similar by emitting the nuts similarly and uh, also the motor is being held by a couple of screws that can be put here and also the cover and the snap fit for the battery they've all been placed in appropriate places 
along with the soldering of motor and the switch. Just to check, one can always operate it at this stage. The motor op operates in both the directions and expected, and so this bigger pillar is also ready to go. Next step is to take up the bigger pillar and pass these big screws through them. They've been cut to appropriate size, as mentioned in the part list, and. Uh, so you need to uh, make sure that these are passed a little ahead so that we can compensate for the thickness of the smaller pillar. And then you can just pass these rods. So once all the, the whole uh, rods pass through, the sub-assembly is again ready for the next stage and we can lock this condition by putting the nuts at the extreme ends so that this does not move from its place. So now you can see that the smaller and the bigger pillar are constrained with each other and cannot be moved relatively. Now that we have the pillar sub-assembly ready, we can now take the final step and assemble the repository sub-assembly that we done and along with the pillar sub-assembly to make this a final unit and this can be done to, by making sure that the rod takes in the motor shaft and the other end is passed through the bearing in the smaller pillar and once we tighten up the set screw the assembly is ready and we can use it as we like thank you